This is Bewilderbeasts, an infotainment show dedicated to inspiring curiosity for all ages by investigating the ways animals intersect at humanity. I am not a historian, an ethologist, a researcher, a scientist, a zoologist, a trained audio engineer, or an expert in, well, anything. Y'all, I'm lucky if I can remember to put my clean laundry in the dryer before it gets funky. And while I make every effort to present things as accurately as I can with a fun flair, I'm going to mess up. And that's okay. I hope I've given you a nice place to jump off from on your own adventures into curiosity. Or at the very least, I've given you the key to win your next round of trivia. Hello and welcome to Bewilderbeasts. I'm your host, Melissa McKee McGrath, still recording from the tiniest podcast studio closet outside of Boston, Massachusetts. Today on Bewilderbeasts, we're going to explain why most whales won't eat you. Most. Sharks are still going to eat the heck out of you, though. All right, let's go. One of my favorite stories that came out of the summer was a dude from Boston who got freaking swallowed by a whale dude. It's right wicked scary dude. And we're going to talk about him after a little update. I need a bit of an assist from you, though. Do you have a favorite story that we've covered on the show? If so, I need you to let me know what that story is. See, I want to make a new sticker. I've nearly run out of the really cool rainbow ones for the Patreon folk, and I really want to sound out a new one, but... I thought a new design would be really fun, and I can zip some of the existing Patreons, Patrons? Patreons? Patreons? I don't know. The people who donate every month, that's how this works. You get a sticker, and sometimes I'll send you new ones just for funsies. So you don't just get the one, you get other ones as they come out. It's like a happy little surprise in your mailbox. Is it a bill? No. It's a sticker of exploding whale, and look, its guts are so lifelike with this hologram. See, now you might understand why I need a little help. <laughs> like, So not every story is going to lend itself really well to a sticker, but if you have an idea for a sticker, send it in. So just ping me at bewilderbeastspod at gmail.com with your design or idea through October 15th, and I'll pick my favorite for distribution, and you will get full attribution. Pretty fun, right? Okay, so now that we have that fun thingy to do, shall we get on with the show? Okay, Provincetown, Massachusetts. P-Town, if you're nasty. It's a home to about 3,000 people over the year and 60,000 people in the summer. 3,000 to 60,000 people, that's a huge jump. That is a tourist town. It is the preferred destination if you love beaches, harbor cruises, artists, tourist towns, and is most known for being a very friendly and popular LGBTQ plus community. Also, super great if you love the Delta variant COVID outbreaks. Whoopsie. Mask up, y'all. So my friend Donna went a few weeks ago and got me a bandana for me or my dog. I'm actually not sure which. But really, it turns out that she just knows me too well. The bandana said, I like my whiskey straight, but my friends can go either way. I love this bandana so much. (laughs) So as someone who lived and grew up in and around coastal tourist towns, pro tip, go in September. It's still really nice out and there's about 75% fewer people. It's so great. But I'm not talking about P-Town because I'm sponsored by the Provincetown Chamber of Commerce. In fact, I'm very much not. There is a whale of a story here that might have come across your radar a few months back. There are two main characters in this story. Lobsterman Michael Packard, sorry, Packard, New England, and a humpback whale. So Michael was doing what he does as a lobsterman. He put on his fanciest, nicest, head-to-toe scuba gear for the ladies. And he dove into the toasty, warm, 50-degree water to collect lobster traps. How else do you think you got lobster rolls? Quote, All of a sudden I felt this huge shove 
and the next thing I knew it was completely black. Packard recalled on Friday afternoon following his release from the Cape Cod Hospital in Hyannis. Quote, I could sense I was moving and I could feel the whole whale squeezing with his muscles in his mouth. Yee. So it turns out Michael, in full scuba gear, thought that he was eaten by a shark. But when he, still in the mouth of the sea beast, realized, huh, I'm not being chewed. There's no teeth marks. So either Jaws lied to me or this isn't a shark. Sorry, shock. He realized he was likely in the mouth of a whale. At this point, the whale started to shake his head, almost as if you were eating, like, chocolate cake, right? And then you noticed there was, like, a nail in it or something. That would be alarming. And as whales eat krill, which are actually weirdly little crustaceans, like little teeny tiny lobsters and very small fish, you can imagine for this whale, getting a mouthful of Mike is maybe not how he thought his day was going to go either. Michael said that it was about 30 to 40 seconds before the whale surfaced. Michael saw a light. The whale started shaking his head from side to side. Sing it, Ariana Grande. And the next thing he knew, he, he went into the light. The good kind. Hallelujah. Not the dead kind. He was outside in the water, not far from his boat. His crewman, Josiah Mayo, which is an ingredient in a lobster roll, indicated that he saw a whale burst to the surface and even his crewmate thought that this was a great white shark. Y'all work on the water. Great white. Sharp, pointy teeth, angular features, humpback whales. They look like if a giant pickle and a whale had a baby. They look nothing alike. Humpback whale babies literally look like little gherkin pickles. How do these marine people not know the difference? <laughs> they work in the ocean. I also work with dogs and couldn't tell you six species of butterfly. So I guess if you work with lobster and lobster related things, you might not be as attuned to whale versus shark. Okay, fine. But seriously, after this, I hope they all go and stream some of this year's Shark Week. But can you imagine thinking, shark? Oh, wait, hey, cool, a whale. Wait, Mike? Whee! What the? According to the Director of Humpback Whale Studies at the Center for Coastal Studies in, drumroll, Provincetown, Juke Robbins, the pickle whales aren't aggressive to people. She said that the whales that got Michael was a medium-sized whale, though once I think you're in a whale, I don't really think it matters what size the whale is. It's still really scary. But here's the thing. When a whale opens its mouth to feed, it kind of pops out. It was described in the article like the mouth becomes a parachute, which essentially blinds the whale. So that's how they end up caught in nets and fishing lines. They open their mouth to eat passing fish, but they don't see the giant net, long lines, big mics, and they get tangled, which is a huge problem. The other thing that worked in Michael's favor is that unlike what pop culture would tell you from the biblical Jonah and the whale, the whale and Pinocchio. Do you guys like remember Geppetto and Pinocchio? They end up in the belly of the whale, start a fire. That's how they get out. And my daughter's favorite song, and I am not making this up, the Mariner's Revenge Song, a 10-minute opus from The Decemberist in which a young child decides to avenge his mother's untimely death by tracking down the man who is responsible for it over 18 years, finds the man on a ship he was on, decides he's going to straight up do a murder, but before he could, a giant whale Moby Dick style swallows him, and with the greatest of irony that only a sea shanty could inspire, the other guy was the only other survivor of this whale swallowing them. They slipped between the teeth, ended up in the belly of this whale, the man gets his revenge while the female vocalist, in airy, flashbacky tones, as does my then four-year-old daughter, sings very airily, Find him, find him, tie him to a pole and break his fingers to splinters, drag him to a hole until he wakes up naked, staring at the ceiling of his grave. It's super creepy to hear that coming from a preschooler en route to school in the backseat of the car. I am sure her music teacher thought so too, as the other kids were asking for the wheels on the bus and she begged for the murder song with the cute whale. 
But I bring those pop culture references up because, as it turns out, non-toothed whales, like humpbacks, no matter how small, medium, or large they are, are unable to swallow a people. Like, we are very much unable to swallow a chicken bone. The esophagus of a whale is literally too teeny to swallow a person despite their size. Now an orca? Oh yeah, that could one million percent eat you with no regrets. After healing from his injuries from the medium-sized whale, all soft tissue damage, it turns out, luckily zero broken bones, Michael said a few things. One, he told Jimmy Kimmel, the late night talk show host, that if he could, he would actually like to apologize to the whale. How would that even go down? Um, hi, Mr. Whale. Oh, your name is really Pickles? Huh. No, no, no. Just something someone told me once. Anywho, I just thought I'd say sorry there for getting in your way. Didn't mean to ruin your lunch, but big ups for letting me out as soon as you did. Thanks, bro. Two, he would go back to diving as soon as possible. This is perhaps the most incredible part of this story and one that you should listen to very carefully if you like to eat lobster. And I can say this as someone who grew up with lobstermen. This is their livelihood. They have to go out at dark 30 in the roughest, coldest seas to set traps with just you, a small crew, and a boat. This is how you feed your family. I went to a funeral and the uncle was a lobsterman who showed up with a day's catch for the family and friends the day before the funeral. They live, eat, breathe, and grieve in lobster. And in my part of Midcoast, Maine, where I grew up, I knew high schoolers who would get up to go lobstering or clamming before they went to classes. This is a family affair and it is hard, but it's one of the three jobs in Maine. Fishing, Dunkin' Donuts, and tourism. And this is by far the hardest. You can get pulled out of a current in the frigid cold waters. Your boat can capsize. And the one thing that we're seeing in Maine right now, and I'm sure also in P-Town, is that with the environmental concerns, fishermen have to go further and further out to get a catch, which is more gas, more time, more effort, and more risk, just to make the ends meet. Many lobstermen and women have left the industry because in many ways, it's not nearly as sustainable as it used to be, though, Demand for lobsters is not decreasing. In fact, Michael Packard is thought to be the last diving lobsterman in P-Town. A short list of things that have happened to Michael Packard. Dragged out to sea by a current. Found and recovered the body of a fellow diver. Treaded water for hours waiting for a rescue. Lost friends to great white sharks, real ones, as an abalone diver near these apex predators. He also survived a plane crash that killed the pilot, killed the co-pilot, and also killed a passenger. And when rescuers located and found the five survivors, they were so injured the rescuer said there was no way they would have survived another night in the jungle. This guy, after all of this, wants to apologize to the whale. Sorry dude, I got in your way, giant medium whale. Here, have some krill. I don't know how many close calls he has left, but according to just the news article I read, it appears that if he were a cat, he'd only have a couple left. So don't panic if you see a baleen whale. You'll just be spit out like someone who mistook a meat cake with mashed potato frosting for a carrot cake. Which has happened to me. And I'm a vegetarian. But reserve said panic for great whites and orcas. They are not as kind to mistaken identity, so in short, looks like a pickle will spit you out. Humpback. Teeth will toads eat you, shark or toothed whale. So I'm basically a whale biologist now. I'm so not. Please don't take this as actual information. Entertainment purposes only. Please don't sue me whale people, shark people, or Ariana Grande. <laughs> So thank you for joining me today on Bewilder Beasts. If you like this show, consider supporting my Patreon. I have a few donors already, and with their help, I am already able to pay for almost all of my hosting fees and website fees for the year. So they get little bonus episodes every month, which you can also get for as little as a dollar a month. That is it. I'm not trying to quit my job. I love my job. But paying for this does help support the show. 
Additionally, if you pay $5 a month or more, I will write a letter to any person in your life who you want to defend getting an animal to. Do you want a pony? I'll write your mom, your landlord, whoever, with a letter defending your desire for said animal. Pony, cat, kitten, dog, screaming cockroach, whatever. I don't even care. I will write a letter to support your choice. It might not be a great letter, and this is for entertainment purposes only, but I will write a letter. If there are topics that you would be interested in hearing about on the podcast, know of historical animals who changed the world, animals who help humans, or other dudes savored by wildlife and live to tell the tale, there are multiple ways to send them in or let me know what you think of the show. Email bewilderbeastpod at gmail.com. I read every email. Tweet a Bewildered Pod. DM or voice text on Bewilderbees Pod on Facebook. I love getting voice texts from kids. So if they have a message that they want to give the show and they have, they're too little to type, or if they really want to share their favorite story, that is an excellent way for them to participate. Or lurk at Bewilderbees on Instagram. For those at the $10 a month level on Patreon, just join the private community on Reddit. There you can ask me anything, pick a show topic that we will cover within reason, and join other folks in the community who are just as nerdy about these animals as we are. I am Melissa McHugh McGrath, author of Considerations for the City Dog. You might also like my other podcast, Totally Possum Pod, which is not for children. All right, now go get curious. I got today's information from the Cape Cod Times, an article by Doug Frazier, dated June 11th, 2021. I was completely inside. Yee! fisheries.noaa.gov Dumb People Town This is a podcast where three comedians read the police blotter and have fun. This story was part of it and reminded me of, oh right, the whale guy. This episode was dated July 23rd, 2021. Thanks to Pinocchio by Walt Disney Studios, The Bible, because, you know, that's a first on this show, and the Decemberist Mariner's Revenge Song. Go listen and please imagine a four-year-old bopping to it with a smile. Links are in the descriptions of today's episode. Intro music is Tiptoe Out the Back by Dan Leibowitz and interstitial music is by MK2. Don't forget to like and subscribe, review, and share with your curious friends. You know, all the other things that every other podcast tells you to do. Thanks for listening. Oh right, Moby Dick. That's another one. That's another whale pop culture reference. Completely forgot about that one. Kind of the big one. Anyway, I will see you next week. Thank you.